church family. You're excited to be here, aren't you? Something good's fixing to happen, right? You're right. Lord's already shown up and the choir's fixing to cut loose, so it's going to be a great day. We're glad that you're here to be a part of it. If you're here with us today as a guest for the first time or maybe the first time in a while, we're super glad that you're here. If you do us a favor, grab one of those connection cards from the pew pocket right in front of you and fill that out. There's a drop box there in the back. You can put that in there so we'll know that you've been here. We can send you some information about our church through the mail this week. Just a reminder of some of the upcoming Christmassy kinds of events. This Wednesday at 6 o'clock, we have our business meeting, and immediately following the business meeting, we'll have our staff Christmas card. Uh, your staff is putting together all of our good stuff that we like to fix and eat, uh, put it on tables, and you come help us eat it up. Uh, so we'll have a great time of fellowship as the family uh, Wednesday starting at 6. Christmas Eve, the Lord's Supper is at 5.30. Come and bring your family to be a part of that. It'll be a tremendous time of worship, and you'll be glad that you came. Uh, then on Christmas Day, which falls on Sunday, uh, the changed schedule we've been talking about, no Sunday school that morning. We'll have one worship service, and that service will start at 9 o'clock on Christmas Day. So come celebrate the birth of our Savior with us that morning. Also, our youth have their Christmas party uh, on the 21st from 6 to 8 p.m., and it's going to be PJs and flapjacks. You can figure out what that is. Also, if you'll bring a wrapped white elephant gift that costs under $5, we'll do a gift exchange and a whole lot of other good games and eat flapjacks till somebody explodes. So we'll be fun. Also, I encourage you to read the insert in your bulletin from your remodel committee. A lot of good information on there. The highlights are that we finally are able to get some uh, hard numbers back on cost of things uh, and some drawings and all that kind of stuff. So we got a pretty good package of information together and we're finishing the details on that. Uh, the general information is we think for sure that we can do it for $450,000 or less. And uh, we've got already 192000 in the building fund. So that's almost half of that. Uh, so if you would like to give toward that building fund between now and the end of the year, a lot of times folks at the end of the year are doing some giving, this is a great time to do that. There's instructions in that insert for you. Uh, sometime early 2023, uh, we'll come back to you with all those numbers in a forum, and then we'll call a church a uh, special called church business meeting for you to vote to uh, either God is leading us to go forward that or he's not, either way. But we'll be praying about that. So if you'd like to give, do. If you need to pray, pray, and then we'll get at that together. Right now, let's do that. Let's pray together, and then let's get ready to experience the majesty of our King. Father, we thank you so much for your amazing love. We thank you that you loved us so much that you sent your one and only Son that if we would believe in him, that we don't have to perish. But, Father, we can have eternal, abundant, overflowing life. Father, thank you that today we get to come and sit at your feet. And we get to hear your majesty proclaimed. We get to experience it up close and personal. Father, we get to worship you because you're worthy. We thank you for this privilege in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and welcome again to our service today. We are so happy to have you here with us and to share this presentation of majesty. Many here have heard the Christmas story and the events surrounding the miraculous birth of Jesus. Perhaps you might be reminded of memories of Christmas seasons past and of time spent with loved ones. We pray that this message of majesty will stir your hearts, that you will let the music and the words paint a picture in your minds of how it all came to be, of the wonder of it all. Parts of our message will also point to Jesus' death and resurrection, his sacrifice. Most of all, we want you to experience the love of the one who sent his only son for us. Thank you. Merry Christmas, everyone, and welcome as we join with all generations to worship our God and King who was born for us. Let us sing His glory and majesty together. Sing angels and prayer.
have gathered in this place to experience and behold our Savior, Jesus Christ. John 1.14 declares, The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We observe His glory, the glory as the same one and only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth.
Jesus Christ came about in this way. After his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, it was discovered that she was pregnant from the Holy Spirit. So her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and not wanting to disgrace her publicly, decided to divorce her secretly. But after he had considered these things, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife, because what has been conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus, that the whole empire should be registered. This first registration took place while Quirinius was governing Syria. So everyone went to be registered, each to his own town. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the family line and house of David to be registered along with Mary, who was engaged to him and was pregnant. While they were there, the time came for her to give birth. She gave birth to her firstborn son, wrapped him tightly in cloth, and laid him in a manger. He could have come with armies like a mighty one could have come with glory like the rising sun he could have come a cloud of wonder so that every eye could see but our savior came he came so silently no claps of thunder no earthly praise, no celebration for the name above all names. How could a world not know what was right before their eyes? Not just a child, but our long awaited. Silently, 
shepherds were staying out in the fields and keeping watch at night over their flock. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Don't be afraid, for look, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. Today, in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped tightly in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to those he favors. When the angels had left them and returned to heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go straight to Bethlehem and see what the angel has told us about. The Lord has made known to us. They hurried off and found both Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. We should have made him welcome. That's what he Should have shouted holy at our Savior's birth. And similar to us today, the shepherds and the kings 
bowed down while Mary and Joseph looked on. And I wonder if they all understood what was before them. The one who breathed a billion stars and planets into place. The one who, with his very fingertip, carved the oceans and raised the mountains. The one who had written and ordained their very life and existence. The one who blew the very air they were breathing at that moment as they knelt down to worship their newborn king. The one who would live for them, speak for them, fight for them, die for them, and would raise to life again for them. Can you picture this moment? The majesty of heaven laying in a manger covered in the filth of earth. Two worlds, one savior who would bridge the great expanse between heaven and earth and do for us what we could never do for ourselves. Oh, that we too might look upon the majesty in the manger, the majesty that laid down his life for us. Shepherds stare into a sky, holding angels from on high. What good news is given them? A miracle in Bethlehem. Unexpected royalty. He will conquer, he will reign. 
The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. A light has dawned on those living in the land of darkness. For a child will be born for us, a son will be given to us, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The dominion will be vast, and its prosperity will never end. He will reign on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish and sustain it with justice and righteousness from now on and forever.
of kings and Lord of lords, when we sing, glorious amen to your great majesty. Come on, church, let us sing the rules of earth. Matthew's Gospel, which I really enjoy, uh, the Christmas story, uh, we always sang, we always read from Luke at, in, in our house. Mr. Bu Buddy Messer or T.J. Messer, whatever he was called, we called him Dad. Uh, we'd gather around before we could open any presents, and he would read the Christmas story from Luke. And and he did that all of my life, and even as I began to have children, uh, he continued to do that. But I like Matthew's gospel. Mark starts when Jesus was an adult. John starts when Jesus was an adult. Matthew and Luke start when Jesus was born. I like, again, Matthew's portrayal of this wonderful story. And I'm going to pick up in the middle of the story to read just a few verses from the scripture. This is from the New Living Translation. And as Joseph considered this, he fell asleep, and an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, do not be afraid to go ahead with your marriage to Mary." For the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you will call his name Jesus. 
for he will save his people from their sins. All this happened to fulfill the Lord's message through his prophet. Look, the virgin will conceive a child. She will give birth to a son, and he will be called Emmanuel, meaning God is with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him. He brought Mary home to be his wife, but she remained a virgin until her son was born, and Joseph named him Jesus. What a wonderful story. And of course, if we go through all the gospel narratives, we know that they traveled to Bethlehem uh, because of tax reasons, and it was there in Bethlehem where Jesus was born, a very humble uh, circumstances. I, I guess that portrayal by uh, the chosen group uh, when they do the shepherd's story, which was, by the way, the first portrayal uh, that they put together in, in movie form. It's only 23 minutes long, but it is a wonderful story. If you can get it on YouTube, I suggest that you do so. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. But it shows how humble the circumstances were. It shows how uh, earthy everything was. I've been to Canada many times to go fishing, and I used to love to see my wife and one of my best friends come out of the outhouse. Uh, I think my best friend, we counted 12 seconds, was, uh, and, and, and she set the record, you know, for going in and then coming out. And boy, when they would come out, they'd just bust the door open with the hinges. Well, it was earthy like that <laughs> when Jesus was born. He was born in a cow stall. He was born where the horses eat the hay, and he was laid in a manger, not very clean. Was it like going to the hospital to give birth? It was very humble, to say the least, in the way that Jesus was born. He was born silently, and that night as Jesus finally came into the world, The world knew a great light that shined in the darkness. If it stopped there, it would be a shame. But it continued on. And I remember in 1959, as we were going into the uh, fall season of the year, getting ready for Thanksgiving and getting ready for Christmas, uh, and things that I was so excited about. I remember one day, I got it. I understood what the preacher was saying. Wasn't very old, and he had been talking mumbo-jumbo up to that point in my life. But I got it that morning. I was scared when the light of Jesus shined into my heart, and so I ran out. And I've told this story many, many times. I need to tell it one more time. No, I'll tell it a hundred times if I get the opportunity. But I remember going and hiding in the floorboard of our DeSoto station wagon. It was a family car. Uh, Mom and Dad had five of us. By the time Mom was 24 years of age, there were just a bunch of kids. And uh, so I was hiding there in the floorboard and I was crying because God was speaking to my heart. I got it. He shined in my darkness and I began to conceive. I love the children. Thank you all. Let's give the Lord a big hand for our children. Thank you for being a part of this presentation of the gospel. It's a wonderful, wonderful opportunity for them. But I remember when I was just a young boy, 
of six years of age. And I got it. As Jesus' light shined into my darkness. As I realized that Jesus came to save me from my sins. You say, well, what kind of sins did you have as a six-year-old? Well, trust me, I had plenty of sins. <laughs> I had plenty of sins. I remember one day, uh, one of my sins, I just laughed my head off because my brother put some Monopoly money in the offering plate when it was passed by. We give our offerings in the back. Now, I guess if, if we ever get the county committee, if you ever get a bunch of Monopoly money, you'd know that my oldest brother was, was it, but part of that service. But he put some Monopoly money, but that, that wasn't quite as funny as watching my mom take the money out of the plate <laughs> with the usher standing there watching her. <laughs> you know, he had this look on his face like she, he didn't know if she was making change <laughs> or she was just short of grocery money that week. But anyway, she took the Monopoly money, and I laughed. I laughed so hard that the pew began to shake, and, and uh, that was one of my sins. Uh, trust me, when I was six years old, I was a sinner, and I had darkness in my life. But Jesus shined in my darkness, and I got it. So it doesn't matter if you start with John's Gospel or our Sunday school lesson has been taking us these last few Sundays. It doesn't matter if you read Mark's gospel where Jesus was an adult and we've been preaching through Mark. It doesn't matter if you read the birth story in Luke's gospel and, and you see all the, the narration that happens there and a lot of our Christmas songs come from uh, Luke's gospel. Doesn't matter if you read it from Matthew's gospel, where it talks about Jesus, who is a Savior that will forgive us of our sins. It does, none of that matters. What matters is, is he shining in the darkness of your life. And some of you may say, well, I was saved 50 years ago, or 40 years ago, or 20 years ago, or I... I just went through the baptism. We're going to enjoy a baptism uh, in the second service. In fact, one of the young men that's singing in the choir, I don't know how you're going to make that trip. I guess you're going to do a Houdini <laughs> act. But he's going to be baptized, and he's going to come out and sing in this program. But it... it None of that matters. If Jesus shines in the darkness of your life, he can do that at any time that he wants to. And you will discover that church isn't the light of the world. The bank isn't the light of the world. And trust me, I'm, I'm selling a house and rebuilding an, an old house right now. And, and so money is very precious to Becky and I right now. And uh, some of you have been through that, building a house, and, and you know, you know, uh, that you want the lending institutions to be in your favor. But th that's not where the answer is. The answer is not in family. And certainly we desperately need to get back to what family means in our communities but the light comes through Jesus because it is in Jesus that we know the forgiveness of our sins. Now, I want you to stand with me for just a moment. And we're going to move into a time of invitation where you can respond to the gospel message that has been presented to us this morning. If you would, bow your head for just a minute. I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know where you are in your life. Maybe today, for the first time, you're, you got it. Maybe today, for the first time, 
Jesus has spoken to your heart like you did to mine many, many years ago and many times since. I don't know what brought you here this morning. Maybe it was to hear the Christmas choir. By the way, this choir is, a, I, I guess, for lack of a better word, it is an anomaly these days. Because you don't see a choir like this. Randy Buffington attested to that. that. But wasn't this a wonderful presentation as they always lead us in worship? While we go through this time, it's an opportunity for you to respond. Our ministers are going to be standing here at the front and we'll receive you for prayer as God speaks to your heart. Right now, I want you to reach out to him the very best you can. Just reach out to him in your heart. You reach out to Jesus. Try to close everything else out. Everything the choir sang, anything that I may have said, just close it out and listen to Jesus and what Jesus is saying to you. Perhaps he's shining into your darkness right now. And perhaps for the very first time you can say, I get it. Jesus came for me. He's my Savior. And he will forgive me of my sins. Maybe you've never experienced that in your life. Oh, maybe you've been to church a time or two on Christmas and Easter, but you've really, honestly, never, you've never got it. But today you do. As Jesus speaks to your heart, we're going to sing in just a moment. And as we sing, God speaking to your heart, I want to ask you to step out come to one of these ministers that are standing here at the front. Lord, we thank you for your love and goodness. Lord, we have things that are bugging us in our lives. We have sin. That's the number one thing that we just seem to not be able to get over. We ask you to forgive us. Lord, if there are those here today that have never trusted you, that they would do so. Maybe they trusted you, but then they quit trusting you, and they need to simply come and say, I want to rededicate my life. I want to make a recommitment of my trust in Jesus. There may be some here today, and they're fighting some physical infirmities, some cancer, some ailment that they can't get on top of and the doctors can't get on top of but they want to come and ask you Jesus to be their healer I don't know why you brought all of us here today but you did and I know it was for more than just to hear this wonderful choir sing or to hear your scripture i I believe that you brought people here to encounter a living, risen Savior, Jesus. I pray these things in Jesus' name for his glory and honor. Amen. Would you sing as we sing together? And while we sing, God speaking to your heart, this is your opportunity to come. Over the skies above the hammer appears a song While angels sing to Lord his shepherds Three wise men seeking truth travel from afar Hoping to find Stop me. 
turn this over to Brother Brett, I, I just want to give the Lord a big round of thanks and applause for this wonderful choir that sang. Would you join me? And for this wonderful orchestra that... And for the sound and lighting people in the back. And for the children and Miss Susan who guides them every Wednesday night. You didn't notice any wiggling, did you? The only wiggling I saw was Sierra and, and Susan. I, you know, I know why Miss Stephanie pairs you all together is because she's afraid you're going to knock the rest of the choir down. But y'all were in sync, and it looked great, and it was wonderful. Uh, just bless the Lord. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise for Miss Stephanie. And the choir one more time. Thank you, boss. We have an advantage up here because we get to see all of this. So why don't you take just a second and just look around. That's what family looks like. We are brothers and sisters in Christ. We are family. It's not a place we just come to gather to get our worship on. This is our family. This is where home is. Spiritual home is for us. And today we had family Christmas. We worshiped our king together. Now we get to, as family, go to? Sunday school. The correct answer. We're going to Sunday school. If you see somebody headed to the car, tackle them, bring them back in. 
we have a class just for them. It's Matt Beal's class. Dave Fry is our Deacon of the Week. He is going to come and lead us in prayer, and then you get to go do the Sunday school. And then when we leave this building today, we are the body of Christ. I do want to share that Miss Carol, thank you, Rick, that Miss Carol had a word of thanks today. Uh, it was just in the last few days. Yesterday, that is in the last few. That's real fresh, real fresh. <clears throat> her daughter and granddaughter came and banged on your door and invited her to come to Christmas with them, and that is a healing in relationships. That's a family coming together. God's at work in all ways, physical healing, emotional healing, relationship healing. God is a God that heals. So praise the Lord for that. Dave, come and lead us in prayer, my friend. Thank you. Let us pray. Dear gracious and wonderful Heavenly Father, I praise you, Lord. And it just totally astounds us that we stop and think that you loved us so very, very much. You sent your wonderful, wonderful son down here. And for 33 years, he walked, he talked the surface of this earth. And he felt the cold, and he felt the heat, and he felt hunger. And he knew all the pain that man suffers too. But in the very end... In the very end, he allowed himself to be placed on a cross, and there he died for our sins. He died for our sins, that we could have a relationship with you, dear Heavenly Father, each and every day. And we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Amen. Amen. 